Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of Crystal Plasticity Basics and in this video we are going to discuss about phenomenological models used in crystal plasticity. In the previous video of Crystal Plasticity Basics, I discussed terms such as slip planes, slip directions, slip system, what is resolved shear, what is critical resolved shear etc. I highly encourage to go and watch that video first if you did not because we are going to use these terms in this video. To understand phenomenological models in crystal plasticity, it is very important to have knowledge of these four things. First, it's slip planes, slip directions and slip systems. Then second, it's resolved shear. In simple terms, resolved shear is nothing but component of applied load which is acting on particular slip system. And you can find that out using this equation. I talked in detail about these two things in my previous video. That's why I highly encourage you to see that video first. And third thing you should know is finite strain theory. More specifically, you should know about kinematics, then terms like deformation gradient or velocity gradient, and of course, plasticity. This is a simple typical stress strain curve from uniaxial tension test. And to model plasticity, usually we need three things. First is yield condition. Yield condition is just combination of stresses at which material yields. For uniaxial tension, it will be just one value, sigma y. But for 2D and 3D case, it will be locus or surface. Then second thing, flow rule. Flow rule tells us how material flows beyond initial yield. From here, where the stress strain curve will go, in this direction or this direction or this direction, that we will know by flow rule. And usually flow rule is given in terms of relation between plastic strain and stress. It doesn't have to be plastic strain, it might be plastic strain rate also. And in most of the plasticity models, it is plastic strain rate. And finally, hardening rule. Hardening rule tells us how yield surface is evolving with respect to plastic strain. Because when material undergoes plastic deformation, if you unload it and load it again, the yield will be changed. It will not be this initial value. Yield will occur somewhere over here. So hardening rule tells us how the yield surface is changing. Some examples are like isotropic hardening and kinematic hardening. So in this video, we are going to see phenomenological model which will give us exactly these three things in terms of crystal plasticity. Now let's see the constitutive model. Imagine this is undeformed configuration and this one is deformed configuration. So using deformation gradient, we can convert deformed configuration into undeformed configuration. Similar to plasticity theory, in crystal plasticity also, we are going to assume that this deformation gradient can be represented by two separate deformation gradients. One will be elastic deformation gradient and another will be plastic deformation gradient. And multiplication of these two will give us deformation gradient. Now constitutive model is nothing but the equation which gives us relation between these deformation gradients and stresses. So for elastic part, it is same as finite deformation elasticity theory. So the relation between this elastic deformation gradient and stress can be given by this equation. Over here, this capital E is nothing but finite strain, finite elastic strain. And the relation between this capital EE and FE is given by this equation. So if you substitute value of this EE from this equation, we will get relation between elastic deformation gradient and stresses, which is generalized Hooke's law. This C will not be isotropic. It will depend on directions. So we need some relation between this plastic deformation gradient and stress. Now, as I already said, in many plastic deformation models, we don't give relation between plastic strain and stress, but rather we give it in terms of strain rate. So we can obtain this velocity gradient in terms of FP, as given by this equation. And now we will define a relation between this plastic velocity gradient and stresses. And this is that relation. Over here, what we are saying is plastic velocity gradient LP is dependent on something called shear rate. And this shear rate is different for different slip systems. So let's take an example of some crystal who has six slip systems. Then value of this alpha will vary from one to six. And this LP we can get by summing six terms of this shear rate. And this shear rate will depend on stress. So see, we are coming back to relation between FP and stress. That's what we want at the end. So we are assuming shear rate is some function of resolved shear stress and resistance of slip system. Now resolved shear stress, we already know. This is a component of applied load on that slip system. So we can calculate this resolved shear and this resistance is something new term. This is actually the crust of phenomenological model. 
So there is no physical quantity such as resistance. This is just we are assuming. In reality, the plastic deformation will occur because of dislocation movement. But we are not going to consider that. That's why it is called phenomenological model. If you consider dislocation density, that is called as physics based model. That we will see in another video. And important thing over here is the resistance of any particular slip system will not be constant. It will also change. And that is given by this equation. So we are saying resistance of slip system is again some function of shear rate. So these two equations are interlinked. And if you notice over here, this R had superscript alpha, but this shear rate had superscript beta. What it means is the resistance of any particular slip system depends not only on shear rate of that system, but also shear rates of all the systems. And this H alpha beta will gives us the dependency between resistance of one slip system to another slip system. This is known as dependency matrix. Now, if we compare this to our finite deformation plasticity theory, this evolution of resistance equation is actually giving us yield condition and hardening rule both. And this evolution of shear rate equation is equivalent to flow rule. So in simple world, constitutive model should give us relation between this F and stress S. And how we are doing that is F we are decomposing into F E and F P. F E is pretty simple. Directly we have relation between stress tensor and F E by using this equation. And for F P, we will convert that into L P. And now we have relation between L P and shear rate. And shear rate depends on resolved shear stress, which finally depends on this tensor P. So instead of having direct relation, we are just having very complicated relation. But at the end, constitutive model is giving us just relation between F and P. Now the next thing is to understand which functions. So what about what this function should be and what this function should be. So there are many different types of functions. So there are many different phenomenological crystal plasticity models. This theory will apply to all of them. Only thing which will change is they will assume some different functions. So in this video, let's discuss two models. This theory is same for all the models. Now we are just going to see which these two functions should be. So this is one example which is known as voice hardening model. Over here, this equation is given by this and evolution of resistance equation is given by this. So as you can see here, this shear rate is dependent on resolved shear. Resolved shear is at two places over here and also resistance. And then how this resistance will change is given by this equation. Now over here, we are actually dividing resistance in two parts, Ry and Rw. This Ry is kind of equivalent to yield resistance and Rw is dependent on, again, shear rate. Now one important thing to note here is this is the simplest model. If you see the R, there is no superscript alpha, which means resistance is same on all slip systems. In this equation, there are some parameters which you can maybe relate directly to some physical quantity. Like this Ry, you can say it is as a yield resistance or this H0, you can say it as a slope of hardening. But there are some parameters like M or over here this N. Those are just material constant. And usually how we will obtain them is by curve fitting a simulation result into a material response obtained by experiments. As this is a simple model, there are not many parameters. So it is kind of easy to do it. But let's see one more model where there are many, many terms. So this is also again called voice hardening model. This is the second example. But the difference over here is this R had superscript alpha. Therefore, the resistance on each slip system is different. And that's why we have dependency matrix over here. If you see the earlier equation, there is no dependency matrix. But now there is a dependency matrix. Therefore, there are many, many parameters. This dependency matrix will be huge. If you have six slip systems, it will be six by six matrix. Of course, there will not be 36 terms in it because some terms will be same, so it will reduce. But still the number of parameters you have to find increases exponentially. Apart from that, this is the same model as previous model. There are some subtle differences, but it is almost same. Another thing is this previous model is already implemented in Warp 3D software. And this second model is already implemented in Damask software. That's why the style of writing equation is little bit different. For example, here it is n. If you see this model, there is n minus one, but actually it is same power law. Or here they are dividing into Ry plus Rw, here they are not, but it is actually similar. 
If you want to know how to run example of crystal plasticity in this Damask software or in Warp 3D software, you can see other tutorial videos on this channel. And if you have any questions, if you need any files, you can shoot me an email and I will send it to you. You can find my email in about section of this YouTube channel. So these are just two examples. There are even more complicated models and we will talk about them in future videos. And finally, how to solve these equations numerically. We will have equilibrium equation. We will have all these constitutive equations and also we have to apply initial conditions, boundary conditions. After we consider all these equations, it gets very difficult to solve them analytically. So the only option to solve them is numerical methods. And of course, we can't go into detail of that in this video. But as of now, I will tell you there are four softwares in which these constitutive models are already implemented. One of them is called Damask, one is Warp 3D, one is called Moose and one is Abacus with CPM subroutine. So you can use these softwares to solve them numerically. And you can find tutorials for all these softwares on this channel. Just to show you one example, you can find this video on my channel where we are using two elements and we are going to apply voice hardening crystal plasticity model. We will fix one end and we will apply a load on another end and we will plot a stress strain curve. All the material parameters are also given what you will need and we will discuss what is this each material parameter and how to get it as well. Another thing we did not discuss in this video is crystal orientation. For these phenomenological models, we don't have to go into crystal orientation much means crystal's stress strain curve will change when we change the crystal orientation. If we rotate the crystal, it will change. So we will see that as well in that example. And in future videos, we will see what are Euler angles and pole figures. These are actually the way to represent crystal orientation in a systematic way. Also, we will see what are physics based crystal plasticity models. We will see what is twin and how it differs from slip and many tutorials on Warp 3D software. Also, I will make a tutorial on Naper software. Naper is actually a software to create microstructure. And that's it for this video. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.